In this video, we are going to be talking about project ideas to learn AWS. I'm going to be talking about five different projects of varying difficulty, so you'll find something that's suitable for beginners and even more advanced users. So let's just jump right into it, starting with something a little bit simple. The first project idea is for a WordPress blog. WordPress is a well-known blogging platform that you can use to self-publish informational articles or any type of article that you want. Using AWS, we can take advantage of Amazon LightSail to host our WordPress instance. Amazon LightSail makes it super easy to set up your WordPress blog. It's very similar to what you would see in competitor products from GoDaddy. WordPress is one launch type, but there's a whole bunch of other ones as well, such as setting up LAMP stacks or mean stacks or even a Node.js server if you want. You'll also have to use Amazon Route 53, which is a DNS service through AWS that allows you to register for your domain and map the IP address to your LightSail instance. In this exercise, you'll learn quite a few things. The first one is domain registration. You'll learn about static IPs and mapping them to your LightSail instance. You'll learn about taking snapshots to back up your databases. And you can optionally take a look at load balancing if you have a very high traffic blog. So that's it for number one. How about for number two? Number two is an inventory detection web scraper. So say for instance, you have a retailer where you're looking to purchase an item from. Maybe it's something like Best Buy or Target or something that has some kind of item on an online store that you would like to purchase. Maybe you're like me and you're trying to find a video card like a 3080 over here that you just can't seem to get your hands on. So to build a serverless application that detects inventory levels, we start with what are called CloudWatch events. CloudWatch events allow you to trigger serverless cron jobs at regular intervals. We can wire that up to a Lambda function which is a serverless compute option, which will allow us to hit that web page and scrape it for resources. We can link the CloudWatch event to our Lambda function to perform the refresh every one minute or so. You can even choose a shorter duration interval if you want to really get competitive and try to find that item that's out of stock. When our CloudWatch event triggers our Lambda function, it's going to launch a headless browser and parse the HTML from the Best Buy website for a particular URL that our item is located at. By examining certain elements in the HTML, we should be able to figure out if there's any stock that's currently available. If there is, we can trigger an Amazon Simple Notification Service, or SNS, by calling that programmatically from our Lambda function. And then we can wire our SNS topic to our cell phone, such that anytime our application detects that there's some inventory in stock, it'll send us a text message. All right, so how about for another application idea? Something like image recognition. So what if we're trying to build an application that can detect dog images? Obviously, this is not a dog, it's a beach ball. What about this image? Of course it's a dog, and his name is Chino. He's my dog. So how can we build an application that does this on AWS? Well, it turns out it's a pretty simple process. We can take our files and store them into Amazon S3, or Simple Storage Service. We can configure our S3 bucket such that any time a file gets uploaded, it'll trigger a Lambda function. The input to the Lambda function will be the file name of the S3 object that was just uploaded. In the Lambda function code, we can call on Amazon Recognition, which is an image detection service based on machine learning that AWS provides. Thankfully, you don't need to train your own model to detect something as simple as dogs. Amazon Recognition has a bunch of pre-built labels with over 2,000 different ones that allow you to easily detect all sorts of common images, things like dogs, roads, cars, streets, so on and so forth. So when our Lambda function gets invoked, we can call on that service and point it to the S3 file that we just uploaded to determine if it's a dog or not. From there, you can publish the result back to the client or maybe just observe the output in the console itself. Our next project is a data processing workflow. So there's a pretty popular open API called Aviation Stack, and this API gives you access to airline data all across the world. You can use this API to grab a pretty large data set on a bunch of different airport locations. In this example, we want to take a raw data set that contains departures and inbound flights and then do some analysis on them. To make this possible, we'll grab a data set from Aviation Stack. From there, we're going to upload that data set into Amazon Simple Storage Service. We can also combine this with AWS's step functions. Step functions allow you to perform workflow style operations in sequence and also give you the ability to monitor the progress of your workflow over time. Upon uploading the dataset to S3, we can trigger our step function workflow. Our step function workflow can contain a bunch of different steps. The primary driver of the step is an AWS Glue job. AWS Glue is a data processing service that allows you to perform some data transformations where you specify the inputs and the outputs, so where your data is located, what type of transformations you want to do, and where you'd like to deliver it to. 
So in our AWS Glue job, we can trigger it to look at our S3 dataset that we just uploaded and perform some aggregation statistics, maybe summarize the total amount of inbound and outbound departures for a particular aviation hub. Once we have all our results, we can store that data in something like Amazon Aurora or even Amazon Aurora serverless to save some extra cost. Once we save the data into our database, we can notify other consumers through Amazon EventBridge that that data is ready for consumption. So our final project is a cloud-based to-do app. So we all know about to-do apps. They're a very common example when we're trying to learn a new front-end framework. But what if we're trying to persist the data sets to the cloud and not just have it so that it only works on our local host? In that case, we can leverage AWS to make a cloud-based version of it. So first of all, it starts with your React application or any other type of front-end framework that you choose. You can keep the front-end local on your home machine or you can deploy a static website to Amazon S3. But for our back-end where the APIs are located, we have a bunch of different options. The first one is to use GraphQL. In that case, we want to leverage AWS AppSync, which is a managed GraphQL server that allows us to perform different types of operations. If you're more of a REST type of person, there's an option there for you, and that's Amazon API Gateway. API Gateway provides you an easy way to set up and get going with REST endpoints. We need storage for this, so in that case, we want to use something like AWS DynamoDB, which is an ultra-fast NoSQL style database that can scale horizontally. If you went with API Gateway, then you of course need some kind of compute layer. There's many different options here, but in this case, I'm going to use Amazon EC2, or Elastic Compute Cloud. You can also use AWS Lambda if you want a serverless option, and even Amazon ECS, or Elastic Container Service, if you're into hosting containers. Our compute tier will need to integrate directly with the database to store and retrieve all datasets related to our to-do app. This isn't all that useful unless we have some protection over the resources. After all, if we have two different users using this to-do app, we don't want you to be able to see what my to-dos are and for me to be able to see what your to-dos are. So we need some type of authentication and authorization. For that, there's Amazon Cognito. Amazon Cognito is an authentication and authorization service that allows you to set up user pools. You can allow users to create accounts that are native to Amazon Cognito, or you can integrate with social sign-on providers like Google, Facebook, and many more. I have multiple videos where I've created many of these different applications, so I'll leave links to them in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.